Sometimes when I'm working on boat projects, it kind of feels like the wheels are spinning. There's like little bits that get done, little bits that get done, and then all of a sudden, a lot gets done. Today is one of those a lot gets done days. I have got all the components laid out here. These are gonna be all the things I need to wire in. We've got the solar controllers, we've got the bus bars, which we're gonna use for the solar and also air con water maker. We've got the circuit breaker boxes all made up. We've got uh, on off switches for the solar back there. These are the contactors we'll be using to power the water maker and air cons um, from our 12 volt switchboard. So all that stuff has got to go in the old air con compartment under the couch in the salon. That's back here. This is the locker I was talking about, it used to house an air conditioning. This will be where all those components are going to be installed. You can see I've, I've started to run wires. Those are from a couple of the air conditionings that we've already installed. So I got to figure out how all that stuff's going to fit in here. And we're definitely going to do some test fitting first. My first attempt at kind of test fitting things, definitely a fail. Should have realized uh, all the components were a bit too heavy to be using tape to try to get them going vertically. So instead, we're gonna do a mock-up here, just out of cardboard. That way I can just kind of move things around, figure out where they're gonna work there, and then I can get them actually bolted in place. Got the bus bars in place and pretty pleased with how they've come out. Let me kind of walk you through my philosophy. So the bus bars over on that side, that's going to be for solar. Over here, that's going to be for the water maker and the new air cons. So these up here, those are going to be contactors. And this one right here is going to be providing power to the air cons. And then this one will be the power to the water maker. And the way I'm going to work that is I'll wire in the 12 volt switch at our right switch at our 12 volt panel so that I can choose to turn them on, turn them off. We're going to do kind of the big power cables are going to run up here in the middle and then into uh, the bus bars. This down here, that's the Felipe shunt that'll help keep track of the, the solar uh, output. I uh, like having that just kind of as a backup system uh, to the Victron that we've got. So positive bus bars on top negative bus bars down below and we'll be feeding wires in from the battery compartments down there was running out of daylight so got this done somewhat quickly we've got all the solar controllers mounted around this edge um they'll all wire into that circuit box the contactors will feed into the circuit breaker box for the water maker and the air cons there and then Bus bars down below. Now I just have to wire everything up. I'm slowly getting everything wired up in here, but I'm realizing cable management is going to be an issue. I've got the positive from the solar controllers are going into the circuit breaker box and then to the positive solar bus bar. So that's all done, but that's already a lot of wires and cables down there. So now I have to wire in the negative battery side down to the negative solar bus bar and there still has to be room for the positive and negative from the solar panels I uh, have to do the VE direct cables um, to a USB hub which will then plug into the rest of the Victron system there's a there's a lot to go in there still we're in someplace different we are we're in the workshop yeah, and we got our man Chris over there. He's doing some uh, fun stuff for us. What are we here for? Yeah, so we're taking a look at the frame structure and basically he's been building the middle support for each of the solar panels. Um, 
So there is this, one of our solar panels is somewhere around here. I got a picture of it this morning. Yeah. But. And then he built like a mock frame of the solar panel so he can make sure that the supports are in the right spot. Everything fits where it's supposed to. Exactly. So it's real progress. Welding and metalwork is like a dark art to me, so we were so incredibly lucky to be working with Chris. It's not an exaggeration to say we were watching a true artist at work. His attention to detail and extreme patience in answering all my questions was greatly appreciated. There was quite a lot of effort involved to make sure we found the right balance of aesthetics and the extreme strength we needed to feel comfortable adding this big of an arch to Starry Horizons. And he was good about making sure we weren't going to blind ourselves. So, remember the blue light thing? making me so ridiculously happy to see this all coming together and Chris has been super awesome about trying to like help us out figuring out how to get shots and all that stuff so it's this is a lot of fun. This day was mostly a bunch of tack welding to get everything fitted in place. It had taken much longer to get all the supplies than any of us had wanted but once Chris got started working progress got made fast. Literally the next day he invited us back again to see how they did some prep work on the metal, and I was shocked to see how much had been accomplished. It's just so fascinating. Uh, the first step he was doing was a deburring of the metal plate, and the second step is actually polishing it. So I think he's gonna be done with that in a little bit. Might bring it down so we can see a finished product. And now Chris is gonna be working on welding the whole frame. feeling a little bit in the groove today so not too much filming but a lot of progress being made so I have got the circuit breaker box for the solar panels are completely done all wired in all the positives coming to the bus bar all labeled I've done some cable management as I've been going along I have gotten the VE direct to the USB cables all put in now don't don't judge too much that's where the USB hub is going to be mounted. I still need to definitely do something better with all the excess cable, but uh, this is at least temporarily in place, so I can figure out where I'm going to be mounting and running the USB cable from there um, back to the main Victron system. So it's all coming together quite nicely. I'm rather pleased with all that. And I have done my best to label kind of which order the circuit breakers will go in so I can do some official labeling later as well as starting to label which controllers will go for which uh, solar panel and BF5 bifacial panel number five. Something super exciting is happening today. We've got the first look at a new solar arch. For the first time, we could start to get a sense of the scale and just how big this thing was going to be. The guys used the lift to get it up into place and quickly got started with the fitting. You guys are going on a quick break, so let me try to explain a little bit what we're doing here. They've got um, some holes drilled here at the side. Uh, drill and tapped, and we're going to use some nuts on the back of the side bolts because we can reach those inside the traveler. Uh, we've been leveling it out, so they've got digital levels, of course. 
um, using our halyards to be able to keep it and do some modified adjustments on side to side. So I think they've got it roughly where they want it. Uh, I hopped on our neighbor's boat to take a quick peek and uh, it's looking pretty, pretty damn good. So I think when they come back, um, they're gonna do just kind of a little bit of test fielding, fitting for the legs are gonna sit and come on down uh, to the transom of the boat and um, maybe do a little bit of spot welding or something like that just to get everything in place, take it off, do final fabrication. But this is looking really good. I actually had it wrong, and Chris was planning to do some field welding to get the legs fitted. There was a unique angle he wanted to make sure to get just right, so he and his boss Steve got to work. Let's give a quick update on kind of where we're at with the solar arch. So they have been out here kind of fitting the legs in place. So the whole thing is at least there's just a tack weld up at the top, and then the base is all into the hole. It's all got a nice solid adhering with some Sikaflex, some giant washers in the back. That thing ain't going nowhere. Uh, so unfortunately, it's a little windy and gray today, which means that actually to the field weld up at the very top of the legs up there, uh, we need it to be a very calm day. So we're gonna go ahead and push that off, I think until tomorrow, kind of do the final welding of the frame. But today, I think we're gonna to try to get one of the panels, pop them up there, just see where it's gonna sit, and we gotta like, drill some holes in the frame for the wires are gonna run. So we'll get that done today while we wait for the wind to calm down. We'd chosen five of the Canadian Solar 450 watt bifacial solar panels. Together with the remaining Solara panels, we'll now have a rated output of almost 3.2 kilowatts of solar. But, the bifacials can also generate up to 30% extra power from the backside. Time will tell how much extra power they actually generate, but having this massive array will be the key for us as we transition away from a generator-based boat. We're adding new 12-volt systems like our Mabru air conditioners and a Schenker water maker, as well as changing the wiring of our hot water heater to work off our inverter. I've done the math, and I'm confident in the changes we're making, but the true test will be once we get back to the Bahamas and live on the boat. Stopping for the day, and there are three panels up there. I still have to wire them all in, of course, and waiting for tomorrow for the last welding of the legs. But oh my goodness, that makes me so excited. It is not the most beautiful day out here, but it's calm enough that Chris can finish up the welding and the polishing. Field welding looks extra uncomfortable, but Chris again did a great job getting everything in place. This frame is incredibly sturdy, which it will need to be hanging off the back of the boat. I do really love these days where products just kind of seem to take a giant leap forward, and today is definitely one of those days. Uh, I'm up here on the top of Star Horizons, you can see there's a whole lot of panels back there, the, the arch is on. So last week they finished up all the welding and getting that in place. So that feels so good to have that in. We started installing some of the panels, but noticed that there was quite a lot of rattling between the frame of the arch and the frame of the panels. Yeah, probably should put some weather stripping or something like that in there to start with. So. Um, today we have been going back in adding weather stripping and that is making a huge difference. So uh, Chris and I are working together. Uh, I'm putting down weather stripping where I can. He's unbolting panels, removing panels, we're bolting them back down, adding more weather stripping. So by the end of today we should have all the solar panels, solar panels bolted down and ready for me to start wiring. All the panels are mounted and bolted down and I'm so pleased. It looks so cool back there. It's just, you know, that nice extension off the coach roof. It is adding a lot more shade. Uh, it's a bit more noticeable than I was expecting, but it's, it's very, very nice, I gotta admit. Actually, getting the things bolted down was tricky. Uh, where the mounts on the panels themselves are, uh, just kind of sit underneath the coach roof. So it was kind of leaning in, in you know, recurring theme, just tight spaces, trying to get this, this working on both just tight spaces. So we managed to get that down. Uh, Chris got most of them. I managed to help out at least with a few. Uh, so now all the panels are down. I just got a wire. The wiring was a massive project all by itself and required the both of us. We worked together okay. to run the wiring from the compartments where all the solar controllers are mounted all the way back to the engine rooms. 
but I ran into a snag when trying to get the wires up into the arch. There are a lot of wires hanging down behind me. Yeah, that's because I'm wiring in the solar panels today. It, this is one of those uh, processes that can be just oh so frustrating. Um, running the wires was a nightmare. So my original plan was we are using eight gauge cables, uh, just one size over, just you know, no resistance, maximum efficiency. That's what I was going for. So I had eight gauge cable. There were two cores in the um, jacket, and trying to run those up the legs just was not working. Uh, there was just not enough space for it to you know make the turns that it needed to. So we had to do a bit of a rethink in the middle and uh, went with, you can still see on one end here, uh, just some red and black stranded wire by itself, or one strand each, and we were able to get that up and around all the, the bends that we needed to. Used a little bit of, um, believe it or not, there's something called wire pulling lubricant. That certainly helped. So it, it, took, it took a while, but we got it. All the, all the panels, have wires coming out where they need to be. It's not the absolute ideal way, but sometimes on boats you can't get absolutely ideal. So this is gonna be the best. I'm in a bit of a rush against time, trying to get the solar panels finished wired in uh, because there is a wicked storm. Notice little local New Englander lingo right there. Uh, I think it's it's the remnants of Hurricane Ian that just, just ravaged Florida a couple of days ago now that's making its up way towards us. So big winds, lots of rain tomorrow. The MC4 connectors that are out there are not waterproof unless they're connected, but I don't really want to connect them unless everything inside the boat is also wired in uh, because I don't just want voltage sitting on wires somewhere in the boat. Just finished up here in the salon wiring in all of the actual solar controllers and everything. So those connections are all made. Now I just have to go into the engine rooms themselves, splice all the connectors coming from um, where the panels actually are. We had to run 10 gauge wire down into the engine compartments and then we splice that into eight gauge, which then runs all the way up here. So I'm not filming a whole lot of it, but I promise I'll come back in here and talk more about what I've done once everything's finished. As I have been editing this video, I realized I forgot to come back and actually talk about how I designed and set up the system. So even though everything is done now, it's all wired in, uh, let's go ahead and just show you kind of the philosophy of the system and go through that. I have added in on-off switches on the positive side of all the solar controllers. This will allow me to isolate each of the controllers if I need to work on them. A uh, little extra just power cutoff backup, so I do like that. All of the solar panels have their own solar controllers. That's true for the entire boat. So every single solar panel we have has their own controller. Just absolute maximizes efficiency, uh, less worrying about shade all of those things. So each panel is wired into the solar controller. The solar controller, uh, the positive side goes into the circuit breaker box, and then everything goes into the bus bars, which then feed back into the main battery bus bars uh, for the lithium batteries on the boat. So very efficient, I like how that works. Now, uh, we do have now a Victron Servo GX on the boat as well. Uh, and I can tie all of these things in using uh, USB. The VE direct to USB adapter cable is what I've got. I can use a powered USB hub, uh, which allows me to only run one USB wire all the way up to the Servo GX, but have multiple solar controllers plugged in. Um, I should be putting up a diagram kind of the system right now, so you can kind of see exactly the layout, uh, the design behind the whole thing, but I'm quite pleased with how this has all turned out. Now, Back to the actual install. I kind of failed at getting everything prepped before the storm hit here. So I've got blue tape up holding all the wires in place. It has worked. It's definitely not the final solution, but while the conditions are pretty nasty out here, I'm going to go inside and do some wiring. It is moment of truth time. Everything has been wired in. I made all the connections from the solar controller bus bar into the main battery bus bar, both positive and negative. That's all run. The battery on-off switches, or the controller on-off switches that I've added in, all wired in. Uh, circuit breakers, all wired in. Everything's labeled. I know which things are. I have updated all the firmware for the new solar controllers. 
definitely want to make sure you do that first. So, yeah, moment of truth time. Let's see if when I actually turn the switches to on and let power get to the controllers, if we're actually going to generate anything. So, down here, got all my switches on and Victron app. There we go. That was regulator BF3. That's power coming in, baby. With confirmation that everything was working properly, I could get to work doing the permanent securing of the wires. Finding something that could bond a plastic zip tie mount to the aluminum frame of the solar panel was a bit tricky, but some JB Weld plastic bonder came to the rescue. There wasn't a lot of extra space, so after letting everything dry, it was a meticulous process of getting the zip ties through the mounts and then securing all the cables. I think I'm ready to declare the solar panels done. It's a pretty amazing feeling. Um, took a little bit trying to figure out exactly how we are going to get the zip ties mounted, but we got that in the end and the wires are all nicely tucked away. I've got grommets for all the places where the wires go into the frame, so it's as watertight as I can get it. And I'm pleased. I This is going to be just such an absolute game changer for us. Uh, this is basically the entire refit is revolving around, so I am just I'm thrilled that this has come together and, and looks so awesome. Now, we just have to get in the water and actually test how this is going to work out.